Irish Targets Group. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and introduce our panelists while you start making your ways back to your seats. Um, our first presenter today, and, and just so you know, we've rearranged the program a little bit uh, because of participant uh, one participant not being available for the last session of the day. Uh, and so we're going to have two presenters on this panel and two presenters for session four. All right, so our presenters for this session on activism in the media. Uh, the first one is Dr. Khalid Lahlou from, who is a lecturer at Hassan II University School of Humanities in Casablanca. Uh, Dr. Khalid Lahlou has been teaching a number of courses, including media and cultural studies, African and African American literatures, and he's responsible for a research group uh, that explores African American identities and cultures. He's also very interested in youth issues and social media. Here we go, <laughs> as, we, as we take pictures. Um, <laughs> Uh, the paper today will look at the role of the media and youth in the Moroccan version of the Arab Spring. So thank you very much. And the paper is entitled The Role of Media and Youth in the Moroccan Arab Spring. I, I use this one. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Can I Thank you, Mrs. President, for this introduction. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, the present paper aims at uh, shedding light on the active participation of the Moroccan youth in the Moroccan Arab Spring and the movement February 20th. The success of this movement boils down to the overuse of social media, something not taken seriously at that time. Social media helped in shaping the, the grievances of this movement and guaranteed and generated a social consciousness of the economic and social discrepancies in need of change. Some local media analysts have it that this movement was apolitical. This paper argues against the arguments held by those media analysts. Ladies and gentlemen, let me share with you, through this presentation, the role of the media and youth in the Moroccan Arab Spring that took place nearly uh, eight years ago. This presentation will try to shed light on the contribution of social media in the social unrest during what is commonly referred to as Arab Spring in Morocco, together with the manner activists in the February 20th movements named after the first large march held on that date, have used social media to assemble a large number of Moroccans. My presentation is composed of different sections in the course of which I will try to demonstrate how media and youth have largely played a key role in the Moroccan version of the Arab Spring. I will try to show how, how social network, how social networks have led to the construction of meaning that can challenge the preconceived views on Moroccan youngsters' political awareness. I will conclude my presentation by indicating the extent to which the Moroccan version of the Arab Spring embodied in the February 20th movement has fully achieved its ultimate purpose and hence succeeded in involving citizens from the different social backgrounds literates and illiterates, urban inhabitants and rural ones. To begin with, let me briefly remind ourselves of the importance of information technologies in our daily life. Technology, we are told, informs us, brings us together, and helps us form new communities that are committed to tapping into an unlimited source of creative energy. I would insist on something that communication and information technologies have proven to be highly significant means, not only of informing, but also of mobilizing people in Morocco to march against what I would enumerate as social injustice, lack of democracy, poor distribution of wealth, and social exclusion, to name but a few, 
is beyond doubt. Thanks to that new technology and the social media being an indivisible uh, component of it, Moroccans, through the February 20th movement, led by energetic youth, have been able to seriously contest the dominant fond foundations and norms in a Moroccan society that has long been dismissed as submissive or worse still, subservient. When massively marching to ask for democracy, dignity, and freedom of speech, the youth, by embracing the values of that movement, have tried to construct new meanings. Not only by protesting in a traditional way, but by brilliantly making use, good use of social media. The point that I would like to make here is that social media cannot be only, describing as, uh, cannot be only described as a mobilization vehicle for activists, but that it also represents a form of new meaning construction. The acknowledgement of the activist social involvement in a never changing and globalized world and embracing universal values based on equality, real democracy, social justice, and dignity. The questions that are worth asking in this respect are the following. Who are the activists of the February 20th movement? How did they appropriate social media and use it to such advantage in their endeavors to assemble people and attain their objectives? Before answering these questions and other questions to come, let us shed some light on the context in which that movement was born, very briefly. According to official statistics released by 2011 census, Morocco has more than 35 million inhabitants, a bit less than California and little more than Texas, 39 and 29 million respectively. Young people in Morocco make up 30% of the population and one tenth of the region's total youth population. The levels of exclusion are high. A recent state-of-the-art World Bank survey has revealed that 49% of Moroccan youth are neither in school nor in the workplace. Furthermore, Morocco has one of the highest illiteracy rates amongst the surrounding MENA region countries, MENA, Middle East, and North Africa. In 2011, 22% of the population were illiterate, with a higher percentage of women than men and then a higher per percent of rural dwellers than the urban population. According to an African Development Bank report recently released, state education is considered to be one of an inferior quality than the widely spread private. Morocco is held to be a poor country on the grounds that 15% of the population live, be live below subsistence level, especially in remote backward areas. According to official figures, 15% of the population are unemployed, 60% of whom are graduates. For several, year, for several years, these unemployed graduates have protested almost daily in front of the parliament in Rabat, the capital of Morocco, asking for steady jobs in the public sector. Nowadays, more than half of the population in Morocco live in cities, most of whom have migrated from rural areas where joblessness is high and working conditions poor. It should be noted in this respect that the advent of satellite TV, smartphones, and information communication technology have been remarkable, and these changes have had a swift impact on Moroccan society at large. Let me share with you some other statistics that I believe may be relevant to our subject of analysis. Morocco counts even more mobile numbers than citizens. As many people own more than one telephone. In 2011, the year where when the, when the February 20th movement came into existence, one in three household, households owned a computer and 39% had an internet connection. 
This is according to a website called checkfacebook.com. More than 11 million Moroccans use the internet on a daily basis, which means that public places such as work, school, or internet cafes offer an important form of access to the internet connection. Young people, young Moroccan people, are particularly active on the internet and social media. More than 45% of all users are between the ages of 18 and 24, according to Rahman 2012. The questions that I would like to ask here is, how is this related to the February 20th movement? According to Yuris, 2012, modern technologies have become a particularly valuable means of communication in new social movements, transforming time, space, meaning, and media networks. These network-based new social movement has a precise structure, noticeable flexibility, and a clear sense of purpose, and are, above all, characterized by their fluid and democratic membership. They are also highly decentralized in their orientation with a diverse leadership role or no leaders at all. And as Sir Bernie, 2011, puts it, Facebook provides a space where silence and fear are broken and trust can be built, where social networks can turn political and where home and diaspora can come together. Simulated by the social unrest in Tunisia and Egypt during what is commonly termed the Arab Spring, young Moroccans started to organize huge marches of protests across the country asking for more democracy, social justice, and anti-corruption measures. The February 20th movement could be regarded as a vivid illustration of one of the new social movements characterized by a penetrating use of technology. Needless to mention that politics in Morocco is very closely associated, really, oh, associated with the older generation, dishonesty, and bureaucracy, things that young activists opposed, disbelieved, and rejected immensely. This is the very reason why they considered themselves to be autonomous protesters, demanding freedom, equality, real, real democracy, social justice, and dignity, matters that are inherently in harmony with a globalized human rights perception. To put it mildly, with the introduction of such international terms as equality, real democracy, social justice, and dignity, they were not only explicitly indicated that they categorically disallowed the old meanings of mainstream politics, but at the same time were trying to get admittance into a transnational public debate. In line with that, the involvement of young people who were long dismissed as apathetic and politically unconscious became a core feature of this new social movement. It should be noted, however, that it was not only politically independent youth that facilitated the February 20th movement. In fact, other members from the Amazigh movement, from different political parties, Marxist groups, and labor unions also joined the movement or to a certain degree morally supported the demonstration. I will skip something. Coming back to the February 20th, well, the first demonstration on February 20th, 2011, witnessed a huge success. This is wholly due to the fa to Facebook pages and Twitter accounts, the objective of which was to inform people about their demands and the actions that they were planning to undertake. For example, they started the website Memphis Kinch, a semantically charged expression in Moroccan Arabic, which means we won't give up. To inform people in simple Moroccan Arabic about the news of the movement and, their, and the demonstrations, and to collect articles on the struggle. Multiple online news sites were set up in Moroccan Arabic, French, and English, sites that, that published critical articles on the government revealing the corruption in dominant political and Judicial, uh, juridical institutions. Still have you that, have. No? 
Okay, I still have just something quickly. Uh, well, what really motivated the youngsters related to February 20th movement was to protest and voice their anger against those who held both wealth and, and might, money and authority. They found it hard to understand how one could be a player and a referee at the same time, to borrow soccer terms. Let me open some brackets and say that the king was singled out as he has always enjoyed a spiritual status being a descendant of the prophet. Unlike the demonstrations that took place prior to that date, the, uh, <coughs> sorry. However, uh, October 23rd, 2011 demonstration is a date that will long be engraved in the almanacs of the movement. Why so? Unlike the demonstrations that took place prior to that date, the October 23rd, 2011 started peacefully and ended in a clash with the police. During that demonstration, one activist was severely beaten and had to go to the hospital with many other wounded protesters. Later, on his Facebook page, he articulated his anger at the ruthless way the police had stopped a nonviolent protest. Okay, before concluding this paper, let me reiterate some key points. Even though the members of February 20th movement had dissimilar backgrounds, they shared a common purpose. They struggled for real democracy, social justice, dignity, and equality as universally recognized. Highly motivated by unrest in other neighboring Arab countries, the movement fought online and on offline for their goals. The online and offline activities powered each other and became entirely embedded in this type of new social movement. Young people, people in particular, were challenging the long old established meanings of democracy and demanding real democracy, asking for voice in public debate. By closely scrutinizing the eight years that have passed since the first big demonstration of February 20th movements in 2011, we may come to the conclusion that the high expectations of the protesters have largely remained unfulfilled. It is true that the movement did challenge the meaning of democratic character of the country, but the state today is still organized in a very authoritarian manner. The activists claimed more social justice as part of an international human rights discourse, which, although it was heard internally, did not produce any remarkable results in a national context. So why did the 20th century movement finally achieve, no, and what did February 20th movement finally achieve and what was the role of social media? Briefly, activists appropriated social media to communicate intensively with each other, to convey messages on the internet and to spread videos on the web. They used digital platforms to voice their anger and articulate their frustration when they were beaten by the police at demonstrations or when other activists were arrested. However, it was not solid enough to defeat authorities' violence and counteractions. I must admit that social media were fully in incorporated in this new social movement, but I must also confess that this online in uh, involvement also implies almost mechanically that this movement is principally urban in character and administered mostly by young, educated people. The high illiteracy and the lack of communication accessibilities in, rem in the rural and remote areas exclude those inhabitants from actively taking part in the movement, and hence the limited aspects of 20, 20 February movements. Thank you very much for being such an attentive audience.